What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're going to be reviewing the King Rune KP3S Pro. I think this might be my new favorite recommendation for a budget-friendly printer for anyone looking to get into the hobby and get a solid printer at a cheap price that can really grow with them and they can upgrade and really learn a lot about 3D printing as you grow your 3D printer. But as with most printers in the budget-friendly category, it's not a perfect printer, and there's a few things I think you need to know about first. First off, the design here. This is different than most 3D printers. Most 3D printers are the standard upright. You have two uprights and a crossbar on the top. This one only has a single vertical crossbar and nothing over here. This thing is entirely really well built, really stable. These linear rails are really the big bonus here. And it really all works because they're using linear rails on the x-axis and the z-axis. And that's an easy way to identify between the pro and the regular version. The pro has linear rails on the x and z-axis, while the regular version has linear rails on the x-axis and y-axis. So if you're looking at just a picture, that's an easy way to tell them apart. There are a few other differences. This one build volume is a little bit bigger. You're getting 200 millimeters cubed. They do list a couple times on their website that it's 210 by 210 by 200, but I can only get 200 millimeters of travel out of it. The other big difference is this one has the power supply built into the base here, which is great to have it kind of all enclosed in this one thing instead of having a separate supply. Other specs to mention, we've got a direct drive extruder on here, which is great. It works great. There's also silent stepper motor drivers down inside of here. They're TMC 2225s, I think. So the motors run really quietly while it's running. The fans are also decently quiet. They're not the most silent. They're not Noctua fans in there, but they're relatively quiet. So it kind of just sounds like a room fan noise. I think you could ignore it if you were in the same room as it. And when I'm wearing headphones in here, I don't even know that it's on. Some printers on the other hand are so loud, even when I'm wearing headphones, I can easily tell that the printer's running. This one is really good. Next really important feature to look for in any 3D printer, but it never shows up on a spec list what kind of company is behind it, and what kind of community is there around that printer. Look on printables, look on Thingiverse, see if there's mods for that printer. Go on the company's website and see if they sell upgrades and mods for your printer. You can go on their website and repurchase any part on this printer that were to break. The hot end, nozzles, linear rails, roller bearings, beds, replacement motors, belts, control boards, you can buy control boards with different firmware flashed on it. So if your board were to die for whatever reason, they usually don't die, but say it does die and you want a new one, but you want to move over to Clipper at the same time, you can just buy one from them that comes stock with Clipper. That's just huge for a company to really put the care and effort into giving you the parts. Which is a big reason why I think this is a great printer for a beginner who wants to buy a cheap printer and upgrade it as you go and as you want to add new features and learn about 3D printing and upgrading 3D printers. The company will help you along and that's amazing. And I did want to mention there will be a part two to this video. We're going to go crazy with mods. We're going to do all the upgrades I really have been wanting to do on this, but I wanted to review it in stock configuration. If a printer isn't at least decent stock, then it's probably worth skipping. This one is really good stock, but in the part two, here's some things to look forward to. It's also kind of my list of cons on this printer. First up, the big one is no auto bed leveling. That I think is huge for the end of 2022. Printers should just come with auto bed leveling. I understand that budget printers have to take cuts somewhere. Auto bed leveling is just one of those really nice things. Second upgrade is this glass bed. My first printer was a glass bed and I enjoyed it until I learned what better things are out there. So we're totally gonna be replacing this. We're also gonna be upgrading the Y axis. Currently it uses V slot wheels and King Rune sells a kit to upgrade it to linear rails and a pretty good price for a kit from a company. You know the screws are gonna line up. Everything's gonna work since it's from the company that makes the printer, which is super nice to see. Cause that is one issue I was seeing in some of these models there are more artifacts showing up on the y-axis since it's these v-slot wheels than the x-axis since this thing moves so smoothly on this linear rail. So nice. Linear rails are so good to see on a printer at this price point. And also we're gonna be upgrading this to Clipper that boosts your speeds, that gives you a whole web interface. You don't need to save files onto this micro SD card anymore. You can just upload it to the Raspberry Pi directly. So that'll be a huge upgrade to this printer. I think that covers all the big upgrades we're gonna do to this printer. Let me know if there's anything I missed, something maybe you have on your printer or something you think I should do to this printer. Let me know, I'd love to hear about it. And there are a few other downsides regarding this printer I wanted to mention. The first off is the menu system. It's not great. I would love two buttons I would love to see. 
One is an auto unload that you see on some other printers where you press that one button, it will heat up the hot end and then retract the filament. And then it'll auto load where it will heat up the hot end and extrude some filament. It's just a really convenient button that I see on a lot of other printers that this one doesn't have. To load filament in, you have to go to the extruder and increment up the hot end all the way up to 200 degrees Celsius. Wait till it gets up to temperature and then you can load in your filament. It's just a lot of manual steps where other printers have automated it. Another downside is this filament runout detector over here. It was throwing me off initially and I fixed it with this little piece of filament that I have jammed in here. I think the location of it is a little weird. You have to have the filament running up and then over instead of, I like to have it sitting somewhere else or mounted on the wall above is great. For a direct drive system, you wanna get the filament here, wherever it is. And so instead of having to have it feed up and over, it's just a lot easier to feed directly here. But luckily you can fix that with just a little snip of filament. Another weird thing that's already wearing out where the filament enters the extruder here is plastic and it feeds directly in. And after a week of printing, it's already starting to wear away the edges there because the filament is running roughly on the edge of that plastic. So I fixed it with a little snippet of Bowden tube from another printer, slid it down in that hole, and now it's kind of feeds the filament more directly. Nothing's getting worn away now. It's something to be aware of because if you don't put a piece of PTFE tubing in here, you'll damage your extruder just from using your printer. So. Make sure you fix it by putting this one in there. And one final little complaint, there's no handle on this printer. You kind of have to pick it up like this. A lot of other ones like the Ender 2 has a top handle. The Tronxy Crux I think has a top handle. That would just be a nice add on if there was a top handle here. And so I'm just gonna have to print one out, but it'd be nice if the company had added one. Just kind of a weird design. It's small. But I wish there was a handle on it. So enough complaints about the user experience here. Let's get on to the prints here. These things turned out really good. If you've been seeing my YouTube shorts, you'll have seen a lot of these are printed on this printer since I've really enjoyed using it. So I just keep using it. This one was printed on there, turned out great. There are a few imperfections up here on the tops of some of these scales, I guess you could call them. And I think that's just me printing too fast on a vase mode print. They don't do overhangs very well when you print too quickly on them because the flat parts are printed great. All these flexible prints turned out amazing, super flexible, super strong, very easy to use. This torture toaster, and I have a whole short explaining it, it's a great torture toaster, but I printed it, the bed was too close to the nozzle, so the first layer pressed in too strongly. And then when breaking it away, I damaged some of the tests in here. It looks like it would have passed the tolerance test all the way up to the 0.2 test, but they are no longer inside of the toaster here because they were just destroyed when I was pulling it off of the bed. So I feel like overall print quality, really good for a brand new out of the box sub $200 printer. I wish my first printer was printing this good the first week I had it. But I don't want to give the impression that this is a perfect flawless printer and even a beginner could get this out of the box and start getting great prints out of it. You will get some great prints out of it, but the biggest issue I had was getting the bed leveled correctly. And I know especially when I was a beginner, that was the hardest thing I was having issues with. If this thing came with auto bed leveling out of the box at sub $200, it would be hands down flawless beginner printer. Recommend this for everyone. Currently, I think you need to add auto bed leveling and that adds some cost to it. You'll need to wire it. You'll need to flash some new firmware to it. You'll need to print out a mount to mount that auto bed leveling probe. And since I haven't done it on this printer yet, I can't say how difficult it will be. You just wait for that second video and then I'll know all about it. So I think that sums up everything you need to know about the stock configuration of the King Rune KP3S Pro. Pretty good printer lacking in a few ways, but we're gonna cover it in part two. Make sure you subscribe if you're interested in a bunch of mods, or if you wanna see it used more, I'm using it all the time in YouTube shorts. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any more questions or things I forgot to cover in this video. It's so hard to sum up two weeks of using a printer in a 10 minute little video here, but I hope I covered it all. Well, that just about wraps it up. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.